Hello class, so I want to talk to you about the Pixelated Portrait Project. First thing, it's due April 15th. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to choose a photograph of something that's important to you. Or it could be yourself. Uh, you're going to tightly crop it. Uh, as, as you can see right here, this one's tightly cropped. Okay, so you're not going to get the whole body, okay? You're going to get uh, mainly the face. You're going to zoom up on it. And you're going to make that into a pixelated portrait. Okay, that's what you see over here. And uh, the purpose of this is to give you a bring your attention to and create greater awareness of value and value relationships. Uh, the materials you're going to use: acrylic paint, brushes, and some other painting supplies. Uh, you're going to be using multimedia paper to paint on. Uh, you're going to be using a pencil, scissors, and your presentation board uh, because you're going to be mounting this. So I'm going to show you uh, some of the student work for this project. Here's one example. Okay, the student used themselves as a self-portrait. Uh, here's another example. I believe this is of Alfred Hitchcock. And then here's another example. I'm not sure who this is of. Uh, but in this example, they actually use more squares than we're going to use, uh, but it's done in the same style. So I'm going to show you how you can print your photograph out at 4.5 by 6 inches. And it's going to be similar to the method I showed you um, in the first project, okay, the line project. And once you've chosen your the portrait that you want to make into uh, the pixelated portrait, and I'm choosing Abraham Lincoln, you're going to place that into a Word document, just like that. And you want to make sure it's black and white. In my case, it's already black and white. But in Word, if it's not black and white, what you do, you go to Format Picture and just lower the saturation to zero. Now we want to make it 4.5 by 6 inches. And the way you could do this, you could right click, or you could press Control, click, and you're going to go to crop and with the crop tool you could change the size of the image and um, the shape of it and what, what I mean by the shape I mean you know is it a square is it a rectangle and whatnot so using these two functions you can get the part of the face you want at the size you want So I'm going to make this, and you can see right here it tells you the width and the height. I'm going to make this to 4.5, let's see, 4.5 by 6 inches. Take a little finessing here. Okay, it's close enough. And I'm going to have to increase the size of this to fit that. Okay, so there's my portrait at four and a half by six inches. Okay, once you have this, then you go File, then you go to Print. Okay and you're going to print it. And once you print it out, you want to make sure to measure it to make sure it's four and a half by six inches. Alternatively, you could leave it larger and you could crop it by hand. You could print it out larger and then by hand you could you know, cut it out or draw out the rectangle to where it's going to be cropped. Now, for some reason, uh, you don't have Word, you have a different program, and you can't figure out how to crop your image, um, please let me know, and we could do a Zoom session, share a screen, and I could help you to do that. Also, if you don't have a printer, please talk to me, and we'll figure out a way for you to do this project. Okay, so let's go over the supplies you need to paint your value scale. Uh, you're going to need two of your brushes. Uh, one's going to be the filbert 
okay, the 12 filbert. And this other one's going to be uh, the eight flat. You need two of your paints, okay? You need Mars black and titanium white. You're going to need a napkin or a rag uh, to clean your brushes off. This isn't required, but it's helpful. This is a little spray bottle, and it's taken from a, uh, the eyeglass cleaning kits. And I put water in it. And what this is helpful is to mist your palette to keep it from drying out. So if you get your hands on those, it'll help you out. And this is just a little cup um, or jar of water. Okay, um, just maybe you could get like a jam jar and you put water in there. I wouldn't suggest using anything you drink out of though. Okay, and you're going to place some black paint on your palette. Blow some white paint. Okay, and when you mix colors, you're gonna to wanna to mix them over here. Okay, so in our value scale, we have one at one end, okay? And that's white. And you have seven on the other end, and that's black. And we're first gonna establish our one, which is pure white. Okay. Clean your brush off so it doesn't dry the paint doesn't dry up on the brush. There's our value for one, the lightest possible value. Okay, now we're gonna clean our brushes off, and I suggest even taking this to the sink and cleaning these brushes off very well, because now we're going to establish the darkest value, seven. And you don't want any paint left on the brush. Our darkest possible value, which you mean pure black. Okay, so we have our seven now. It's our darkest possible value, pure black. We have our one, our lightest, lightest possible value, pure white. Now we're gonna establish the middle value, four. Okay, so you're gonna mix some white, some black. You gotta realize that the black is very powerful and it will change the value of the white a lot. You don't need a lot of it. But our goal is to find the value that is in the middle. Okay, so we're gonna fill it in for number four. Okay, then the next one will be a little bit darker. Okay, and then you realize the next one will be darker. Just add a little bit more black to this. Just gotta realize that this paint tends to dry a little bit darker. Okay, and I wanna show you something. Do you see how it it jumps very rapidly from one to two, and then more slowly builds up to seven. And the reason is because I made my four a little too dark. And sometimes you'll find this out, and then what you have to do is I will go back to the middle one, line this one up, and then proceed from there. Then once you're done, your value scale should look something like this. And there should be an even progression from one step to the next. 
and it might be a little bit distorted by the camera, um, but when I'm looking at it right now from real life, um, each step gets progressively darker in this direction and progressively lighter in this direction. And they're, across each step, it's completely even and smooth. The last thing I wanted to talk about um, was the palette. So I know you don't have palette paper, um, so you can use a plastic, um, plastic plate to paint on. Uh, you don't want to paint on uh, surfaces that are absorbent. For example, you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to use wood as a palette because it'll suck the um, water out of the paint and dry it up more quickly. So after you've printed your image out at four and a half by six inches, you're then going to grid it. Okay, and you're going to grid it using quarter inch um, squares. Okay, and the way you're going to do this is you're going to start on one side. Okay, you're gonna line the edge of your ruler up with the edge of the photograph. And every quarter inch, you're gonna make a little dash. And then you go to the other side, starting from the top in the same way I did with this side. I'm gonna make dashes at every quarter inch. bottom side okay and then you're gonna draw lines across and you're gonna line you're gonna line up the dash with the corresponding dash on the other side. And once, you're, once you have it complete, uh, your picture should look something like this. Then you're going to want to label it. And you're going to want to label it alphabetically, horizontally. So go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, R, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, and so on. Okay, and you're going to want to label it numerically, vertically. You're going to need to transfer this grid onto here. Okay. So now you're going to want to draw a 9 by 12 inch rectangle on your 11 by 14 inch paper. Okay, since it's 11 inches wide, I would just go an inch in. Okay, this is 14, you need it to be 12. So go an inch in, and you'll take off two inches. An inch in on each side. Okay, this is 14, you need it to be 12. So go an inch in, and you'll take off two inches. An inch in on each side. And look, you got something that's 9 by 12. Okay? Now your goal 
is to tape it onto your hardboard, okay? Nice and nice and firm onto the board. You're gonna apply this onto here. You're gonna apply two coats, and the gesso is gonna help protect. Um, your paper from warping. And use your biggest brush because you want to get this done quickly. Okay, and the gesso's the gesso's the liquid that came in the big bottle. To apply it, let it dry for at least 20 minutes before you apply the second okay and then once you have one coat in one direction you want to apply another coat in the other direction okay you know what you don't want to let this sit for at least an hour before you paint on it okay just to let these uh to let it completely dry and for the wrinkles to set out a little bit. Once the gesso is dry for about an hour, then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to uh, basically replicate your grid onto here. But since this is, since the height of this and the width of this is twice as large as the height and width of the photo, you're going to be making uh, your increments twice as large and your squares will be twice as large in those dimensions. Okay, so I'm going to make marks every half inch instead of every quarter inch. So what's your 9 by 12 inch paper is going to look like? You're going to have the alphabet on top and on the side you're going to have the numbers.